done. Poor Buddha had to settle that problem. So he said, okay, from now on, no wearing clocks. Monks cannot wear clocks. The rules did not come as part of the Buddha's enlightenment. The rules were, the uh, grew up as and when uh, occasions arose. Right? As and when the occasion arose, the Buddha said, okay, for this, this is the rule. Another thing, now this is to do with expansion. Uh, another one rule was, monks are not allowed to carry salt in their pockets. Cannot carry. Why? Because in India at that time, salt was a very difficult thing to come by. One. And monks are supposed to eat not for the taste, but for the nutrition. You see? So that's why Pindapata, you can put anything. Yeah, you put rice, you put dalcha, you can put custard, whatever. A monk is not supposed to say no. He just look, takes it, he eats it because everything is edible. Nothing is poisonous. It's just not appetizing. Okay? So, in India, if, are, if you add salt, that means you're making it appetizing. That defeats the purpose of the meal eaten by the monk. Okay? So, the Buddha instituted a rule, no salt. <laughs> there was another rule, uh, this is all important because these are all the causes of the quarrel. Another rule that uh, a monk eats at 11 o'clock in one house. Then at 12 o'clock he goes to another house and goes to <laughs> Yeah, And the only rule being you must eat before noon. And in India, of course, the Japanese hadn't invented clocks yet. Okay? So, how do you tell time? You stand, sun is overhead. When the shadow is two fingers long, you stop. You cannot eat anymore. All right? And um, that, that's it. Uh, I remember our late chief, uh, let me say the present chief. The late chief, uh, uh, 1966, the, the, the chief monk in uh, Penang died. And so they, uh, my friends took him by car. And they missed the 12 o'clock lunch. All right, they missed the 12 o'clock lunch. So when they went at 1.30, they went to the next town. They all got out to eat, but she said, no, I don't eat. When he was a young man, he said, I don't eat. Because he used that as an excuse to fast until the next day. He had a, a drink and no, no solid meat. Those were strict monks. OK, anyway. So the Buddha instituted a rule. Once you have had a meal, you cannot eat it again. Now, so these kind of rules were among the 27. Now, while these were being recited, very important point, yeah? While these were being recited, some monks asked, are these rules, because they came from the Buddha, are they muktamat? Are they laws that cannot be changed? Thou shalt not, 227 times. One group said, hello, the Buddha gave these rules, therefore they must not be changed. The younger, larger group said, look, we have to use our common sense. These rules were put in place by the Buddha for organizational purposes. These have nothing to do with spiritual matters. The reason why one meal a day is so that you don't feel sleepy. And monks don't do a lot of physical work, one meal is enough. They don't need the night meal. That's in India. All right? Then the 12 o'clock is a nice guide about that time you don't eat. It does not mean nam nam, you must stop eating. Because there were no clocks to begin with. All right? Then there are some rules cannot be changed. Some rules can be changed. One uh, example of that 12 o'clock thing. Yeah? In today's uh, world, if this poor monk goes to the North Pole, unless he walks like that for six months, and the next six months he'll have to die because of no food. Okay? This rule cannot apply. Today's salt is not a big thing. Today's salt is everywhere available. So what's the big deal if you carry the salt? Okay. Uh, and wearing clocks. Some rules and then uh, this thing about sitting on the floor. In India, you sit on the floor. La. But when you are entertaining President Bush, you don't sit on the floor. 
you, you, you see? So this quarrel arose and the older, more conservative monk said, no, you cannot change. The younger liberal group said, yes, yes we have to use our common sense because the Buddha always said, use our common sense. There was no argument about the sutras. Absolutely no argument. The argument was on this organizational rules for the monks, nothing to do with lay people. That's a very important point you have to remember. So, when that happened, uh, the smaller, more conservative group, the Teras, a Tera is a senior monk, all right? The smaller group, they said, no, we don't change. The younger group, the larger, younger group, the larger group, Maha, all right? The smaller group, Hina. Perkataan Melayu lah, Hina dengan Maha. It's Hina and Maha. And the smaller group and the larger group, they were not. Venerable Kasyapa said, okay, since we cannot decide, we stick to the rules. That's it. He said, let's not change the status quo, we stick to the rules. This quarrel lasted 100 years. It went on and on and on, all right? Until finally, the two groups split. Remember, they did not split on doctrine. They only split on something totally unnecessary. Very important point to remember that, all right? This continues to go on during the time of Asoka. 250 years after the Buddha passed away, Asoka is born. Asoka becomes a, a Buddhist, all right? And he looks and all these monks are quarreling. He calls a council. At that council, the split becomes final, all right? The smaller group, it becomes the Hinayana, more conservative, all right? Whereas the larger group, they have become the Maha Yana. Okay? So that is how, after 200 years after the Buddha passed away, the two groups are split into Hinayana and Mahayana. Yeah? About 230 years. Yeah? Uh, years later, the, 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 the split took place. Then, uh, during one century before the Buddha passed away, uh, before Jesus Christ was born, in Sri Lanka, 89 BC, 89 years before Jesus was born, they were afraid that all these things will get forgotten. So the king at that time decided to write it down. So, at a place called Alu Vihara in Sri Lanka, monks were brought to sit down there and write down all the scriptures. That's the first time, 400 years after the Buddha passed away, the scriptures are written down for the first time. All right? And they're all, uh, how are they written down? On uh, leaves, Pramaira leaves. Pramaira is down panda. Call it Ola. It's called Ola. It's, it's those long strips of uh, things. We, we even have it here. And then papyrus. Uh, no, no. Papyrus is a uh, tradition. That's different. Okay? Papyrus is uh, it's, it's, uh, made. This one is just dry. Right. Yeah. Uh, that's why when they, they walk around, they open that book. That, that's, that's the one. And then with an uh, uh, iron nib, they, they cut into it. Okay, anyway. Uh, they was all taken put into a pagoda and see. The pagoda exists, we don't know what is inside now. Okay, right, and that was 89 BC. For the first time, the scriptures are written out. Go back to Asoka expansion of Buddhism. All right, uh, already during the Buddha's time, already during the Buddha's time, monks were going as far as uh, Afghanistan because we have People asking the monks were not allowed to wear leather shoes, leather slippers, because leather is animal skin. All right. Uh, um, uh, so they asked the Buddha, "How can we walk in the desert?" 
Buddha said, in that case, I allow you. 